Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today we're cooking blackened cobia with a crab topping and a cauliflower puree. Chef Todd Raleigh from the Culinary Arts School at Jeff Davis Community College will be here to show us how to make it. But before we cook it, we gotta hook it. Cobia are also called ling and lemon fish, but regardless of what you choose to call them, they're a great eating fish. The last time we cooked up some cobia on the show, I talked about my favorite way of fishing for them, which is sight fishing along the coast of Alabama and northern Florida in the springtime. At one time, it was not unusual to see six, eight, or even wads of 10 at a time. In that case, the biggest challenge was getting your bait past the smaller ones to catch the bigger ones you wish to target. But these days, it seems like the numbers just aren't there. I don't know if their migratory habits have changed and they're coming along somewhat later or further offshore, or if the numbers are just down. I do know that this year in particular, the numbers were far fewer. While sight fishing for Kobe is my favorite way to catch them, as they migrate further west, we try to fish for them by jigging around offshore structures such as oil platforms. On occasions, while fishing out of the tower on my sport fish boat Vixen, we've caught them 35 feet up in the air and actually released them from there, in which case <laughs> the baby cobia were smaller than trout that I've caught. What's that deck, Randy? On one occasion, we were jigging for hardtails for an offshore blue water trip when we raised a wad of six or eight. We scrambled around to find our larger tackle, and within minutes, we had three on the deck of Vixen and two more hooked up. It was pure chaos. On another trip, we were fishing with dead bait for snapper and couldn't limit out on them for catching cobia, 13 of them. This is particularly amazing when you consider how finicky they can sometimes be. Nothing is as frustrating as having a big fat cobia swim up to the boat, take the bait, and then swim away. And then just when you think he's about to be hooked up, he spits the bait, almost intentionally being obnoxious. It's maddening. All right, we've caught our cobia, and later you'll learn the proper technique for blackening it. But first, let's roast some Brussels sprouts and make our cauliflower puree. You know, it's got plenty of butter and heavy cream. It's not, it tastes very good, but it's not part of your diet. <laughs> well, that's one of God's little tricks, is that anything that tastes good is not necessarily <laughs> good for you, right? Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. We're here at the Culinary Arts School at Jeff Davis Community College with Chef Todd Riley. Later we'll learn how to blacken our cobia, but first let's make some cauliflower puree. Well, Chef Todd, looks like you're all set up uh, to cook a masterpiece here. <laughs> what do we need to do to get started? Uh, first thing we're gonna do is start working on the cauliflower puree. So I'm gonna let you work on that. Well, I'll try to handle that. A little butter here. Alrighty. Butter always makes it taste better. Ooh, got a little bit of a hot pan. And throw some onions in, saute those down. All right. And let those cook a minute, and then we're gonna throw some garlic in. Okay. This is, uh, one of the common mistakes people make is they add garlic too soon. Garlic only takes about 30 seconds to cook. Anything too much heat on it, and it'll actually start to turn bitter. Mm, okay. So the rule of thumb with cooking garlic is you wanna cook it until you can smell it. Oh, okay. So All as right. soon as you can start smelling the aromatics of the garlic, it's done. Okay. So we're gonna cook the onions down so they're translucent a little bit. Okay. And like I said, add the garlic. Got that going there. Okay. All so right. We're gonna add the garlic now. We're gonna do about two tablespoons of garlic. Garlic never hurt anybody. And that's freshly chopped? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Then I've just got a head of cauliflower that I chopped up fairly fine. Okay. Add that in there. And then how long does this cook for? Uh, once we get it sauteed for a couple of minutes, then we're going to add some heavy cream to it, and then we're just going to cook it down until the cauliflower just starts to fall apart. Oh, okay. All right, good. So let me grab that heavy cream. So, 
If you notice, it's got plenty of butter and heavy cream. It's not, it tastes very good, but it's not part of your diet. <laughs> Well, that's one of God's little tricks, is anything that tastes good is not necessarily good for you, right? Well, we can substitute stuff out. I can put some non-fat yogurt, or I can put some almond milk, or I can just uh, sub take out the butter and put some olive oil or grapeseed oil and really help the, the healthy aspect. But for today, we're going to go with the... We're going to go full we're going with the good, Yeah. All right. All right. So that's about it on that. All we're gonna do is let that simmer. Okay. It's gonna come to a boil, and we're just gonna let that go for about okay. 15, 20 minutes until the cauliflower starts to soften up. Okay, great, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is start roasting our cauliflower. So I've, I mean, excuse me, our Brussels sprouts. Our Brussels sprouts, sprouts cooking right. the cauliflower over there. I was gonna call you on that. <laughs> so I've got some Brussels sprouts. All I did was have them, cut off the ends. I've got some Dijon mustard I'm gonna put in there. Okay. All right, some nice fresh honey. Honey offsets any acidic taste usually, huh? Uh, with the honey one, it's gonna come to calm down the Dijon mustard, give it a little honey mustard flavor. And then also those natural sugars, when we pop it in the oven and roast it, it's gonna caramelize and form this nice crispy outer crust. Oh, okay. All right, All right. a little ponzu, which is a citrus soy sauce. Oh. We're salty in that new mommy kind of bring out all the flavors of everything okay. else. Okay. Uh -huh. And then just a little bit of olive oil. Okay, take all those, just mix them up and get everything coated nice. Good. Any tricks on picking Brussels sprouts? Uh, not really. When you roast them, it's kind of cooked down. Obviously, you want them to be nice and, and green. Any kind of brown spots are starting to wilt. And what I, uh, one of the tricks I do with this is I kind of take some of the outer leaves and peel them off. And as you're roasting them, they get nice and burnt, basically, and crispy. And those, those are the best parts. Oh, OK. All right. So pull some of those outer leaves off and kind of pull them off the main. Right. This is one. Brussels sprouts is one of those where it's hit or miss. People either love them or they hate them. But I've never had anybody turn these down. You roast <laughs> them with these this ingredients. They're very, very good. All right, and we're going to put right. a little salt and pepper on there, a little salt and pepper in there. Now you had an interesting entree into cooking, right? I, I think uh, you were telling me that you were highly incentivized back when you were somewhat younger. <laughs> yeah, but my mother, one of the things she did is we all, it's 5 30 in the afternoon, we had to sit around as a family and eat dinner. And as we got older, one of our chores became she cooked, we cleaned. Well, I hate doing dishes, so I made a deal with my mom. If I learned how to cook, I would take that role from her, and she would do the dishes. And so it's just gone from there. <laughs> so, and I still hold fast to that rule today. I work here at the community college, and I don't touch a dish. I've got 300 students that take care of that for me. So well, that's good. what I tell everybody. I learned how to cook, so I didn't have to clean. Got to play to your strengths. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop these Brussels sprouts in. I've got them nice and coated, marinated. I've got a sheet pan that's in the oven, already nice and hot. So I'm going to take this and just, and the reason why you get it hot is you want that nice sear. If you don't have it hot, they'll go on there, and then the water coming out will just start, it'll, they'll just boil. And instead of having oh, nice roasted okay. Brussels sprouts, you're going to have boiled Brussels boiled. sprouts. Okay. All right. Pop that back in the oven, and that's going to go for about 20 minutes. When we return, Chef Todd Riley will show us important tips on the art of blackening. You have to know what you're doing, and he certainly does. All right, so what we're going to do is put it spice side down in the nice hot oil. And we're just gonna smooth that around so it doesn't stick. And what we're gonna do is sear that for about 30 seconds on this side. Then uh -huh. we're gonna pick that whole pan up and stick it right in the oven. Let's get back in the kitchen with Chef Todd Riley. He's got some tips on how to blacken our cobia. So I guess we got the Brussels sprouts in the oven. Mm -hmm. We got the cauliflower simmering. The next step is the cobia, right? Correct, main part of the dish. So we're gonna start working on that. Okay. You caught this Kobe yourself? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I try to get out there, but. All right, so what I've got here is a nice piece of Kobe. As for the thickest one I could find, mm -hmm. um, we've got like a little play on a Caribbean jerk slash Cajun seasoning. So it's got some hints of a Cajun seasoning, and then it's also got some allspice and some brown sugar and some hints of the, of the Caribbean and Jamaica. And the sugars and, and all the spices will it caramelize and blacken on there and it may form a really, really beautiful crust. Is this something you make up yourself? It is. I've actually got a recipe for it. It's got about 17 ingredients. Uh, we ha don't have all day to go through all of them. <laughs> but the main ones are paprika, cumin, brown sugar, some rosemary, dried garlic, and then some um, allspice. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got a pan that's hot. Just put a little bit of 
oil in there. Okay. Now for this one, we don't want to use olive oil. Olive oil is terrible for sauteing. It's got a very low smoke point, so it actually burns at very low temperature. And once it starts to burn, it gets very, very bitter. So you oh. want to use a nice vegetable oil or peanut oil or something along those okay. lines that, that actually has a much higher smoke point. What about like avocado and grapeseed oil, some of those? Uh, the grapeseed oil is actually a great substitute for olive oil. It's got some of the same health properties, but has a much higher smoke point. I use grapeseed oil in almost everything I do. Um, the avocado oil is a much lower smoke point. You want to use okay. that more for salad dressings. Oh, okay. Great with the omega-3s, good for your health, but not very good for sauteing or cooking. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got the pan nice and hot. Um, a good way to tell if the oil is hot without sticking your finger in and burning yourself, mm -hmm. just kind of swirl it around, and if you see little ripples or waves, that means it's nice and hot. Oh, okay. Much Too much farther than that, that's when it's going to start to smoke. And if, like you've done, like I've done millions of times, if you forget and it does start to smoke, you can't just cool it down. Once it smokes, it gets very bitter. Throw it out, wash the pan out, start over. So you don't want to get to that smoke? No, if, you, if it okay. starts to smoke, that it's, it's, it's shot. Yeah, okay. get rid of the oil, start over. All right, so what we're going to do is put it spice side down in the nice hot oil. And we're just going to smooth that around so it doesn't stick. And what we're going to do is sear that for about 30 seconds on this side. Then uh -huh. we're going to pick that whole pan up and stick it right in the oven. I'm not going to flip it or anything. I want those, that crust to form on the bottom. I want it to cook on that side the whole time. Okay. Once it's done, I'm going to pull it out. We'll flip it over, add a little butter to it, spoon that over, and give it a nice, beautiful presentation. Now, you mentioned you, you tried to get the thickest fillet you could. Why is that? Is that for the um, dish you prefer that? or? With, when I'm trying to get the nice crust on there, it's got to sit in the oven for a little bit too too thin, and it I mean I don't even need to go to the oven. It finishes in the it's pan. It's overcooked. So if you put yeah. It in the oven. yeah okay. So I I don't get enough time in the pan to get that nice crisp crust. By the ah. time I stick it in there and look up, it's done. I so see. I like that nice thick piece of fish. That way it gets a good seven eight minutes in the pan and, and gets all that caramelization going. Okay. If I've got a nice piece of flounder or something along those lines, a thinner piece, I, I tend to do a little different recipe. I'll just a little salt and pepper, and then that's that's it. You don't try to get the crust in there. Yeah. No. All right. So I've got a nice little crust going. Like I said, I'm going to leave it this side up and just stick it right in about a 400 degree oven. All right. All right. And now we're going to go back to the puree. We've had this simmering. Okay. We're going to we cooked it until the onions and the cauliflower and all that's nice and soft, and just cook down. What we're going to do is start the puree. You now you can do right this. In the pan there, right? Yep. Well. I've got a nice little fancy chef tool here, which is basically a blender on a stick. On a stick. Now, if you don't have one of these at home, you could transfer it to a traditional blender, do it that way, and then put it back in the pot. But chefs, we're lazy, so we try to. <laughs> less work we have to do, the better. All right, so I just stick it in there, and I'm just going to puree it. Okay. And basically what I'm doing is I'm creating like a cauliflower soup almost. This is going to be kind of our, our starch, and it's also going to be our sauce. It's going to act as two different. Okay. Now, cauliflower is one of those things I can't stand. This is one that my mother... We'd sit at the table, and her rules, we had to eat everything growing up. And this is one of those, I'd sit there till midnight. Until I, so, but I absolutely love cauliflower puree. So I can take cauliflower and the prop, the goodness of cauliflower, infuse a bunch of other flavors, and then it's good to eat. <laughs> yeah, lima beans was mine. I could oh, I'd I sit there until midnight. Yeah. Peas, lima beans, and cauliflower. To this day, I can't. <laughs> lima beans and peas cooking, it makes me nauseous just smelling them. Yeah, head. I'm the same way. And the bad part was my mother loved both of them, so they were on the table three nights a week. That was another reason why I started to learn how to cook, because I could pick and choose what I made. I was about five years old, and my friend and I were playing a fort behind the couch, and my mother was cooking lima beans, and she overheard me talking to him, saying, I hope we're not having lima beans tonight, because I have to go in my little act. And that was the end. I'd convinced her I got really sick, and after that, I, I had to eat lima beans. <laughs> Well, I've got a story about cauliflower that I don't, I don't know if we want to share, but <laughs> she'd make me sit there and I was always say, oh, it's going to make me gag. She'd tell me I was lying and cauliflower actually, it, it came up one night. That was uh, the last time she ever made me eat she cauliflower. She believed you then, okay. Yeah. All right, so that's done there. Okay. So we're just going to set that aside and let that go. All right, looks good. Yeah. All right. So we've got the cauliflower working, the Brussels sprouts are in there, the cobia is in there. Um, when we get done with that, we're going to start plating up. I'm ready for that. Well, while I'm waiting on that, tell me a little bit about the culinary arts program here. I've heard little bits and pieces about it, but I'd like to hear the whole story. Well, we actually have a two-year associate degree in culinary arts. We also have a two-year associate in baking and pastry arts. And then our third degree in that cluster is hotel and restaurant management. So we do the desserts, mm -hmm. the entrees, and the front of the house management all here. Well, in July, and you've been teaching it for some time now, right? I'm going on five years now in the program. About ever so. since it opened up here, right? Um, well, they've had a culinary arts program in some form or fashion for about 10 years, um, but I took over the program right before we took this nice, beautiful building. So I, didn't, I inherited quite a bit of work from my predecessors. So. 
Great. But we've grown leaps and bounds since we've moved into this building. Um, we have by far the nicest facility in the state of Mississippi. Um, we've gone from about 30 students to almost over 300 now. So wow. we've grown quite a bit That's in the fantastic. last five years. So this program is, is, is going nuts. That's great. Well, I can see why with your talent. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm, there's many other chefs that work here, so it's not just me. When we come back, Chef Todd Riley's putting an all on a plate for me to taste. I have a feeling it'll be a masterpiece. It's spicy and sweet on the fish, and then we've got the kind of the bitterness with the sweet on the Brussels sprouts, and then you pair that with the richness of the, the cauliflower, and it just kind of all blends on the palate so you don't get overwhelmed by any one flavor. Mm. Then you get the nice sweetness of the crab on top to kind of bring everything home. The Kobe is about ready. Let's watch as Chef Todd Riley brings it all together, and then it's taste time. Well, it smells like that Kobe uh, ought to be getting close to done. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's about time for all of it to come out of the oven. And I'm ready. Part. Time to eat. All right. So, you got the Kobe. It's been in the oven cooking face down. Oh, what man, am I going to do now? I'm going to take it, flip it over. Oh, you see that nice, that nice, beautiful crust, crust on yeah. there? I'll take a little more butter, stick it in there. I've got some a little Dijon, some garlic, and some honey just to kind of continue the flavor profile that we had. This is make like a little sauce? Yep, what I'm gonna do is take the natural drippings and all that nice, what we call fond, which is the sticky bits at the bottom of the mm -hmm. pan, and I'm gonna deglaze that into the butter, and that's gonna become the sauce for the dish. So I'm just taking, oh, I don't wanna lose any of that flavor, that's why I want it to go right back into the dish. Okay, that makes sense. So, and I'll just take it and spoon a little bit over the top of the fish there. All right, and that's good to go. Now I'm gonna go get the Brussels sprouts out. All right. Well, they look good. Let's see, got that. Oh yeah. All All that that honey brown. stuff yeah. caramelized on there. And now we can start plating up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the cauliflower puree. A nice little serving there in the middle. I chose okay. a green plate on this one because I've got the white cauliflower. Contrast. So it makes yeah. a beautiful contrast. Then we're gonna go with the green on the Brussels sprouts. I'm just gonna use my hands, we're all family here. <laughs> okay, Bring the fish over the top. Oh, wow. And I've got one little surprise for you I didn't tell you about. You're holding out on me, huh? Yep. Oh man, that looks a little sauce over the top there. But how about a little lump crab for the top? Ooh off? man, that nothing knows better than lump crab meat. <laughs> you put crab on cereal to make it taste better. <laughs> I haven't tried that. I think I get that a thought. <laughs> and there we go. A little cauliflower puree, some roasted Brussels sprouts, nice little Kobe, and some crab over the top. Mmm. Well, this is always my very most favorite part. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the flavors and you know what I should pay attention to. We've got a little, it's spicy and sweet on the fish, and then we've got the kind of the bitterness with the sweet on the Brussels sprouts, and then you pair that with the richness of the, the cauliflower, and it just kind of all blends on the palate so you don't get overwhelmed by any one flavor. Mm. Then you get the nice sweetness of the crab on top to kind of bring everything home. Well, I'm tasting this, why don't you talk a little bit about if you're gonna do a wine pairing, which, which you might consider. Mm. Um, with this, with the flavors, I would do a nice heavy oak Chardonnay, something along those lines. Um, it, needs a, it needs a wine that can stand up to the dish because there's a lot of bold flavors, but if you get kind of into the reds, you get a little too much of the tannins, a little overwhelming there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like I said, I would do a nice oak Chardonnay or something along those lines. Mm. What you think? All right, sounds good to me. That's the word we like to hear. Mm. That was excellent. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, um, the Brussels sprouts, and I'm not a big Brussels sprout fan either. Mm -hmm. Those are excellent. And even the cauliflower, I'm not a big cauliflower fan, but that is excellent. It provides a, you know, kind of a starch base, mm -hmm. like you said, but the flavors in there, you can definitely taste that. It's not just regular cauliflower. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent, you outdid yourself. Well, this I is my first it. dish that uh, I've had that you prepared, and I hope it's not my last. <laughs> well, let's keep it going. Well, you learned how to make blackened cobia with roasted Brussels sprouts today, and I'd like to thank Chef Todd Rowley from the Culinary Arts School at Jeff Davis Community College for his expertise in showing us how to do it. And remember, you can find the recipes on our Facebook page or website. Join us next time for another delicious edition of Hook It and Cook It.